I finally finished Path of Vengeance by Kevin Scott. I'm usually more on top of getting book reviews out in a timely manner, but with The Mandalorian, Star Wars Celebration, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Visions Volume 2, The Young Jedi Adventures, and finishing the 2023 complete canon timeline video, I fell behind. And Path of Vengeance is huge, but I can finally talk about it. I'm gonna give my spoiler-free impressions first, but since the book has been out for a bit, I will be talking about plot details later on after a spoiler warning. The short review is that I liked it. I read Cataclysm and loved that book, but still had a lot of questions surrounding the Battle of Dalna. What happened to Marta, Yana, the Mother, and the Leveler? Path of Vengeance came along and gave us a more complete view of the events on Dalna, as well as the Battle of Jeddah. I think we were meant to have questions about all the chaos of Phase 2. The readers are kind of put in the shoes of the Jedi, where for the first time in six centuries or so, they're on the back foot. The Sith have been defeated for a long time, and the Jedi have been able to largely focus on aiding the galaxy without any major threats. The Path of the Open Hand changes that, and it's interesting seeing how quickly some Jedi slip into darkness because this generation has never had to deal with anything like this. Path of Vengeance definitely felt like a Cavan Scott book. The structure reminded me of The Rising Storm, a dash of action at the start, then a buildup of tension until all hell breaks loose. But as a 500-page book, that release of tension didn't start until about 400 pages in. I wish we got a little more mayhem, but that's what Cataclysm was for. That book was like 50% about the Battle of Dalna. Path of Vengeance had a lot of heavy lifting to do in the way of providing answers. I like that Phase 2 was bookended by the young adult novels that focused on the characters of the Path as well. We got to know Marta and Yana and the Mother, learned what their deal is, and we largely didn't see them throughout the rest of the stories. We're left to wonder about them, and then in the final book we get a lot of answered questions and closures. I wasn't fully satisfied with every answer, but again, I think that's by design. We still have a third and final phase of this publishing initiative to tie everything together. I'm feeling enough closure from Phase 2, and I'm feeling intrigue and excitement about some developments that I assume will pop up in Phase 3. And now seems like a good chance to shift into spoiler territory to talk about some of that stuff, so this is your warning if you haven't finished the book yet. I'm gonna start with Planet X, which I do hope gets a better name, although I like that even the characters of the book poke fun at it, but it deserves a more mysterious sounding name because it's a cool location. Marta and several other members of the Path of the Open Hand travel there to gather more nameless eggs, and it's a straight up paradise. It makes people feel like they wanna stay there forever, it heals wounds, its plant life grows back quickly, it seems like it amplifies force sensitivity in people, maybe even people that aren't usually force sensitive, it's really interesting, and I so hope we get back there in Phase 3. But where there is powerful light, there is also powerful dark. The Shriekere are born there, sure, but then we see two more creatures, the Underdweller and the Protector, and they both seem to be even more terrifying? I wonder if the Nameless are their offspring or something? I feel like Planet X fits well alongside Mortis as this insanely mystical place with incredible power where we just have no concept of what is going on right now. I like all the questions I have, and I look forward to learning more. I liked Marta's story quite a bit as we saw her become more and more zealous. I was surprised that she was the one to transition the path of the open hand into the path of the closed fist. The readers aren't walked all the way up to the point where the Nile are created, but we get close enough that we can connect the dots ourselves. The end of the mother's story was satisfying. I liked seeing her and Marta and the Herald all competing for power within their cult. Her petrification by the leveler under Marta's control felt good to read. Unfortunately, the twist surrounding her connection connection to Olivia, the Jedi, was somewhat spoiled back when Phase 2 began. I can't remember exactly how, but we've known the mother was related to Olivia for quite some time. Even if we didn't, I think I would have liked Olivia to be a more central character in Phase 2, just to make that revelation more impactful. But no matter what, I think it's interesting to look at the Jedi through that lens of who they think are worthy of training, and the children they leave behind, and how that might affect them. There's also a new connection with Mari Santeca that is established at the end of the book that I found to be a little confusing, because we see that her mother is not a Santeca, or maybe her mother was lying about her name, but it seems like we're learning about where her abilities in finding paths for the Nile comes from. I just don't yet know how she makes it into the Santeca clan before being kidnapped, or it's possible that this Mari is not THE Mari, because it's also mentioned to be a family name passed down for generations. Like I said, right now I'm just a little confused confused about that. 
But also, like I said, I'm happy to be patient for the answers. The questions are part of the fun. We still have several comics left in Phase 2, but I am glad to be headed towards Phase 3. I enjoyed Phase 2, but I missed the characters we were initially introduced to at the start of the High Republic Initiative. I'm antsy to see what's going on with them one year after the fall of Starlight Beacon. And even though I'm happy to get back to that point in the timeline, I can't wait to see how Phase 2 will enhance that experience. But that's all I've got to say about Path of Vengeance. Let me know what you thought of the book in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.